Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Aero South Africa delayed to July 2022. Also, Major General Des Barker killed in accident. And F-16 Viper Demo Team performing at AirVenture 2021. Happy Friday, everybody. You survived the work week. We have a great show for you ahead of the weekend. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Due to the ongoing pandemic, Aero South Africa delayed to July 2022. Miss Frankfurt, South Africa has taken the decision to postpone the Aero South Africa exhibition and conference to July 2022. The three-day event will take place at Wanderboom National Airport and is supported by Aero Friedrichshafen. The launch event in 2019 was reportedly well received by the general aviation sector and it is hoped that the new date will allow sufficient time for the impacts of the pandemic to settle. Faced with a global unpredictability around the event restrictions and international travel, we believe that we made the best decision for the event. This way, we can provide a platform that is safe for exhibitors, visitors, and staff and encourages high participation, says Annalie Reynolds, show director for Aero South Africa. The event planned for July 2022 will cover the full spectrum of general aviation products, technology, and services. Exhibitors and visitors wishing to fly to the show will benefit from free landing, approach, and ground handling fees. After the break, SE Aeronautics to manufacture greenest wide-body airliner. More news after these messages. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working and you're going to hear more about it. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. SE Aeronautics to manufacture greenest wide-body airliner. SE Aeronautics is launching a new wide-body airliner concept, a 100% monocoque molded wide-body airliner that is being touted as the next generation of aircraft. SE Aeronautics' new mid-size airliner concept the SE-200 carrying up to 264 passengers with a range of 10,560 miles and reducing CO2 production as measured by per seat kilometer by 80%. SE Aeronautics announced the launch of their wide-body airliner concept this week. FAA proposes two more civil penalties against airline passengers. The FAA has proposed civil penalties of $20,000 and $12,250 against two passengers for allegedly interfering with and in one case assaulting flight attendants who instructed them to wear face masks and obey various federal rules. The case includes $20,000 against a passenger on a December 27th JetBlue Airlines flight from Boston to Puerto Rico and a $12,250 fine against a passenger on a December 31st JetBlue Airlines flight from New York to the Dominican Republic. NTSB pondering more regs for revenue passenger carrying GA operations. The National Transportation Safety Board has announced its intentions to hold a public board meeting on March 23rd, 9.30 Eastern Time, to consider a draft report on recommendations for the implementation of stricter regulatory requirements for some revenue passenger carrying general aviation operations. The NTSB has a long history of concerns about the safety of various revenue passenger carrying operations, including sightseeing flights conducted in hot air balloons, helicopters, and other aircraft and parachute jump flights. 
new K-Max to Black Tusk helicopter delivered. Cayman Air Vehicles has delivered a new medium to heavy lift K-Max helicopter to Black Tusk Helicopter, Inc. of Squamish, BC, Canada. Black Tusk performs various external lift projects on every scale, ranging from aerial timber harvesting, ski tower setting, firefighting, and hydroelectric projects. The K-Max features a counter-rotating rotor system and is optimized for repetitive external load operations. The aircraft can lift up to 6,000 pounds in hot and high conditions. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. The International Council of Air Shows reports that Major General Des Barker has died on Wednesday after an accident. Barker's wife reported to ICAS that Des was conducting a check ride in a museum's Patchen Explorer when it experienced a likely engine failure and crashed short of the runway at Swartkop Air Force Base. Both Des and another retired Air Force officer were killed in the accident. The Patchen Explorer belonging to the South African Air Force Museum went down after a witness stated that the aircraft flew over his house, buttering badly, impacting short of runway two. The aircraft was quickly engulfed in flames and left little opportunity for survival. The Explorer was originally developed for pipeline patrol operation, aerial photography, and law enforcement agencies. An occasional speaker at ICAS conventions, a talented air show and test pilot, and the author of the recently published Anatomy of Air show accidents, Barker devoted much of his post-retirement time to documenting, studying, and analyzing air show accidents all over the world. During his 40-year Air Force career, he was a member of the SAAF's aerobatic display team, the Silver Falcons, and became chief test pilot for SAAF's Test Flight and Development Center. After these messages, F-16 Viper demo team performing at Air Venture 2021. Details after the break. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. F-16 Viper Demo Team performing at Air Venture 2021. The U.S. Air Force Air Combat Command F-16 Viper Demonstration Team will be performing at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh 2021, scheduled for July 26 until August 1st. The Viper Demo Team will perform demonstrations as part of their daily air shows during Air Venture, as well as participate in the Air Force Heritage Flight Program. Major Garrett Schmitz is the Viper Demo Team pilot for the 2021 season. The Viper Demo Team is always a popular attraction at air shows across the country, and we're very excited to welcome it back at Oshkosh this summer, as we continue to plan for a full Air Venture event in late July, said Dennis Dunbar, Director of Air Venture Air Show Operations. The Air Command Combat F-16 Viper Demonstration Team hails from Sean Air Force Base, South Carolina. It performs precision aerial maneuvers to demonstrate the unique capabilities of one of the Air Force's premier multi-role fighters, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The team also works with the Air Force Heritage Flight Foundation to create a unique demonstration of the U.S. Air Force's past and present, exhibiting the professional qualities of the Air Force develops in the people who fly, maintain, and support these aircraft. 
That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.